So I thought it might be nice for us to have a little look at... I've, I've got here to Abisca Jura. I thought it might be nice for us to have a bit of a look at where I've been over the past few days and, you know, how I've got from A to B. Um, I thought it might be, nice, might, that might be nice to look on a map. So that's what I've done here. I've got the map out. Right. <clears throat> so I started... here in Abisko. Uh, let's try and find focus. It's a bit further out. So I started here um, and I walked up to this little campsite which is here. That's about four kilometers down the track and then I walked all the way down to Abisko Jura Stugorna which is uh, where I am now actually. But I kept on walking, this is where I stole half a matchbox, kept on walking and camped just about here, so just about a kilometre away. Each of these squares that you probably can only just see is about two kilometres. A centimetre on the map is a kilometre in real life. So then I decided that I'd like to go all the way from Abisca Jura Stugona down to Una Atlas. Stugona down here. So I walked all the way down this bit, and this was the really tough area. And I camped just about around there, near this kind of lakey thing. There are many lakes in Sweden, or at least northern Sweden, as you can see. Then I walked down to Una Atlas, which is where I met the Germans and all of that friendly bunch. And so I camped, well, slept in the woodshed down there. And then, then, then was the day when I walked over the hill and through one of the snowy passes down to Alajora Stugona, down here. And that pass was difficult. Probably not the most difficult, but still difficult. And then I had a day just walking down to Tiaktia. Stugona and then was the tough day remember then was the day that I went over to Nalo Stugan that you can probably somewhat make out over here sorry I'm trying to keep the focus the best I can so I walked up this summer path to Nalo through that really snowy pass at about 1300 to Nalo Stugan then the next day, which was day before yesterday, I walked out from Nalo Stugan, which was really quick, to Vistas, but I didn't stay there. I walked right the way up to the top of this um, top of this Vistas Valley, camped somewhere around here. And then yesterday, I walked all the way up to here. Uh, Radu Yaga. Yep. And then today I've just wandered back up the Kungsleden up to uh, Abisko Jura. Then tomorrow I'm going to walk <laughs> like six kilometres back to that campsite that I stayed at the first night. And then I'm going to walk to the station in the morning. So you can somewhat get the get the understand a little bit about what I've walked. It's not the most lengthy thing that I've ever walked. I mean, it's hardly any distance at all, really, in terms of actual feet on the ground. Um, certainly not over that amount of, the amount of time that I've kind of taken to do it. But uh, that's not quite the point. <laughs> uh, the bogle, that'll be the point of, uh, hey, let's turn this off. The bogle, that'll be the point of, you know, just caning it down a path, road, path, whatever. Um, no, the point of this was to see what it's like in northern Sweden in October. And I've done that. It's good. <laughs> Some bits are full of trees. Some bits are full of very deep snow, some bits are full of friendly Germans, 
some bits are full of random Englishmen talking to a camera on their own in the middle of a empty tourist hut thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's. I'm expecting people to be wondering, you know, why would I go to northern Sweden? Why not go somewhere warm and sunny like Morocco? Um, why come to somewhere that is possibly even mildly slightly more grim than Manchester or Glossop? I mean, certainly I've had my fair share of rain and sleet over the past few days so so why come here and i think really the answer is that it's very good to get to somewhere that's so completely different from home and, it, and it's quite it's, it's different in in a number of ways which is quite ironic because the weather is one place where you know Perhaps it's quite similar, or perhaps at least it's not very dramatically warm and uh, and better. But I mean, being able to walk through these kind of alpine landscapes with towering snow-covered peaks is something that I've not ever done before, and certainly something that I've enjoyed a lot. And being able to walk for <coughs> A, a, a number of good number of days as I have done without meeting another single person is also something that I've never done before um, and so whilst you know it's not a seaside a seaside beach holiday um, it's quite good I mean considering the hyper-connected work that I do and the hyper-connected way I live my life it's not really that hard to see when you think about it in context why for me getting away out into the middle of nowhere for more or less two weeks is actually quite appealing um, you know I, I can quite believe that it wouldn't necessarily appeal to everybody but I think it's a little bit similar to a friend of mine who recently went on a, a cruise ship where there was equally no internet and internet would have cost 50 pounds a day why would I come to somewhere where there's no mobile reception no people no nothing you can kind of see parallels um, or at least I can um, so yeah that's kind of getting a break from uh, the the omnipresent presence of everything which you know I do enjoy but getting away from it's good and um, definitely got away from it here I've not had a mobile signal in days in fact I've seen people more recently than I've had a mobile signal <laughs> that, that phrase is just hilarious Oh dear. Right, anyway, I'm going to go back inside because the temperature's been pretty pretty constant the whole time, but it's been constant at about between minus four to plus six. And right now it's probably zero. So my fingers are beginning to freeze slightly, so I'm going to go and curl back up inside the very warm hut that I've... There's a lot of, there's an old hiking club motto that says if there's more fi if there's more firewood on the firewood stack burn it so um I've been following that motto anyway I'll see you later bye